Good morning, everyone. What happens if we could talk to the animals? If we could talk to the animals and learn their languages, think of all the things we could discuss. If we could walk with the animals and talk with the animals, grunt and squeak and squawk with the animals, and they could squeak and squawk and talk to us. Do you guys have pets? Do you love animals? Well, today we have a very special guest with us, Catherine Bendur, cat. We met her as uh, one of our Akashic family. Um, she was in our Akashic Records class with us. And I still remember the day Kat came to into class and told us about her hearing the uh, bugs in her pool. I thought, oh my gosh, that is so cool. And so strange too. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> welcome everyone to another session uh, of Spirit Sessions, A View of the Light. Bex is away today. I'm here with Teresa and uh, we're holding the fort while Bex is gone. And we're here with our very special guest, uh, Kat Bendura. It's taken us a while to get Kat on, but we're so happy she's here. Um, yes. Happy we, to be here. <laughs> I'm glad you got on. and. Um, Kat had a, a journey. Um, she she realized that she had this gift to speak to animals um, probably all her life, but it really blossomed after she had had cancer. Um, um, when the when she had the cancer, her she realized her gifts, and they began to blossom. I think pro probably from your own healing, right, Kat? Why don't you tell us about that and how you realized that you had a communication with animals? Yeah, so I would say the, the, the one of the many gifts that cancer brought into my life was a lot of downtime. Um, and it was probably the first time in my life that I spent that much time communing with myself um, and really getting to know myself and um, taking a step uh, back out of all of the, you know, things that had been normal everyday activities in my life. And uh, things got quieter and I was able to listen to um, my higher self I think as well as um, the voices of all those around me in a, in a very different way in my life. It was uh, it was a really magical time honestly. Um, everything opening up and expanding um, and if I'm being completely honest, I think I thought I was losing my mind for a minute. <laughs> uh, or longer than a minute. Uh, uh, but as it turns out, I was not. <laughs> so, uh, and, and here we are. It's, it's, been, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Tell, tell us wow. about like going out, out to the pool and, and, and when yes. you first heard them, because that to me, like, wow. Yeah, I That's can see how you might story. think. That's an amazing story. That is an amazing story. Tell us that yeah. one. Oh, thanks, guys. Um, uh, so, really, I was just, um, I, uh, you've heard this before, but I was just so physically non-functional at the time that I was looking for activities that uh, were close to home and that didn't take too much energy. And I thought, I have a pool in the backyard, and I thought, well, um, I can skim the pool. Uh, and it would be a nice meditative activity. And what I found um, was that I couldn't skim the pool uh, because, because <laughs> um, there were uh, what we would all call bugs, um, insects, other beings um, in the pool struggling to get out. And um, skimming requires you drag the net across the surface uh, for anybody who hasn't done it and everything collects in the net. And so what I found myself doing was feeling compelled to go around the pool and pick each one out either if they were in the middle of the pool with the net or with my hands if they were on the edge of the pool. Um, and I felt a connection to them. I felt um, a communication between us that I thought was um, interesting at the very least. Um, uh, they... I remember them stopping and looking at me and turning their head from side to side like a dog would um, and wondering, are they really looking at me? Are they interested? Are they, you know, what's going on here? And uh, there would be times that 
they would have been in the pool for a while and, and um, did not just walk away, run away, fly away, whatever the case may be. Sometimes I would sit with them for a while uh, while they recovered and I would start to have these interactions and feelings. It started with feelings going back and forth between us and, and, um, and surprise and I would say intense curiosity often. Uh, is what it felt like. Um, it just started in that place. Um, and the more time I spent doing that, the interactions began to grow and um, uh, I will say I've had all kinds of different communications with different kinds of animals, but with insects I have yet to have a con the kind of conversation that I would have, say, with a, a, a dog or, or a horse, um, and that's not to diminish them in any way. They're more, um, I don't know what to call it. They feel more like downloads uh, of information um, and almost more like they occupy a different, somewhat magical realm than what we see all day, every day. That would be the best way that I could put it. Um, so it almost a different really, dimension, eh? It, it does feel different. that way. It, I mean, it really does. They're obviously we can see them, and they're here in this one, as we are. But there seems to be something else going on there, uh, and and so it's just you know a lot of uh, feelings. And I do meditational activities in the backyard as well, and those same insect beings that I have helped will come to me in the backyard, sometimes in body, but more often in my mind and spirit. Um, and I'm not just thinking about them. I will be thinking about something entirely different and they will show up in my face um, with gifts, really, is, is the best oh. way that I could put it, uh, in the activity, supportive gifts. So um, it was really interesting for somebody who's interested in developing um, I'll just tell you some of the things that I did that I thought were fun with regard to those pool exercises. Um, uh, I couldn't see the pool immediately when I walked out of the backyard. And so I would stop for a moment and just close my eyes just so I wasn't distracted and feel and allow myself to just breathe and be in the space. And um, the, the intention, with the intention to connect with whoever is in the pool to see if I could pinpoint the location, if I could differentiate the energy between this kind of insect or that kind of insect, or if I could feel it more intensely. Uh, you know, obviously I wasn't out there all day every day, so some of them had already passed on and some of them were waning in their energy and some of them were furiously struggling. Um, and uh, so I would do those experiences, uh, experiments and find that the vast majority of the time I could go right to, I, I would pinpoint in my mind where the struggle was and I would go right to that spot and there would be somebody right there um, and, uh, and could feel the difference absolutely between different kinds of insects, which is fascinating, by the way, if you ever want to try to do that. Um, the, uh, the, the full embodiment of who they came to be is pretty amazing and kind of a lesson, I think, for us in a way. Um, and, uh, and you know, um, it's just, it's really neat. But I think that that kind of experiment can be extrapolated out into other things if you don't have a pool or a pond or a body of water or, um, you know, if you're just sitting in your backyard or on your patio or, or whatever the case may be. Um, or for that matter, uh, in your living room, uh, and there's a fly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. Yeah, just anywhere. I had um, a lot of, I don't know what to call it, a lot of, um, I was going to say fun, but what I would say is it provided a lot of hope um, and it just turns the world into a magical venue for me. I don't, I don't look at anything in the world the same way anymore. And so I'm very thankful. Oh my so, God, that's so cool. 
Pat, there's lots of people who are engaged in this, uh, talking about their different connections with somebody had a, Monica had a connection with a cow a few weeks back, and uh, and oh, didn't act on beautiful. my feelings. Um, but um, I, I mean, we can connect with not only our pets but other animals. I, I realize that now, speaking to you, and but we've all had those. Lassie moments where Lassie has tried really hard to talk to us in our <laughs> language, you know. <clears throat> um, so, but y y your communication is sort of you you're talking to them in their language. And how how does like a, a typical dog or cat speak to you? Like those are ones that we probably most interact with, or horses even. Yeah. Um, that's a cool question, and kind of before I answer it, I want to say I've always wanted to connect with a cow, um, and I oh. haven't. Yeah, I haven't. I oh, haven't. you haven't? Oh, I have. I love cows. I I think I would too. I haven't had that opportunity, and so I um that's I I wanna I would love that opportunity. Um, uh, so they're all different. Um, uh, I we can connect with everything, uh, right? Um. Uh, the birds and and uh, there are feral ca feral cats in in my neighborhood and some cats that are not so feral and everywhere in the middle and um, I most of the time will consciously connect uh, make an effort to connect with everybody and some are more interested than others uh, I find um, uh, they're all very different um, sometimes when I connect it is uh, what I receive is waves of imagery and waves of of uh, feeling, energy, feeling, um, and I have to make sense of that. It's almost like I get the experience of what it is to be that animal um, on a daily basis or um, an experience that they've had, and I just sort of have to feel into that and and figure it out, uh, and they're very gracious with their help with that, um, and and patient. They're very good at the communication, uh, and um, much better than we are. Uh, and and they're very gracious and very patient uh, most of the time. I, uh, always, actually, I've not experienced otherwise. And sometimes they talk to me the way I'm talking to you. Obviously, not verbally out loud, but with the same sort of just um, back and forth. Uh, and I've often went, well, I'll, that's a tangent, but, um, and, and I think um, I've said to people before, sometimes it's like talking to a Harvard professor and um, they're higher level beings than I in my present body. And, uh, I, and I have to ask them to be patient and tell me things more than one time and, um, uh, I have absolutely had experiences with dogs who were high, higher level, one in particular who is a higher level being who came here to uh, do some extremely important work. And um, I'm in awe um, of, of him. Of, uh, I'm in awe of him and often confused uh, in, in the space uh, until I let things settle for some time. So it's... Uh, Certainly not what I would have expected based on growing up with the idea of Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why. Yeah, he was my favorite too. Yeah. Um, Who reaches yeah, out we, first? Do you reach out to them, or are they reaching out to you? Uh, so that's happened both ways. Um, uh, with with um, uh, human clients that I've set up appointments with, I ask that they send me pictures of their animals ahead of time. Um, and uh, I have had circumstances where prior to the scheduled appointment, uh, they will reach out to me um, and let me know that they're, um, especially if there's a difficult situation going on, sometimes they will reach out and feel anxious to, to get going. Um, uh, and, or if it, <laughs> this, uh, this happened, if we had to reschedule one time, we had to reschedule um, and uh, uh, the, one of the dogs showed up to ensure that we were in fact going to have the communication and let me know how important it was to him. Um, so there are times that they do reach out. 
normally um, what happens is at the appointed time, and I do this over the telephone, um, I have found that it's more effective that way um, for me to not be, even if there's if somebody's local, for me to not be distracted by the energy in the space and anything that is going on. And even though it's fun to be there and get to see everybody in person, um, it's also fun. Uh, all, it allows so many other things to come through when I can't see what's going on in the environment or and, and I'm not distracted by those sorts of things. But um, I would say it's usually the norm for us to all show up at the appointed time. And um, I like to start a conversation. This is really how I like to do everything in life. Just start a conversation and they show up and join. Um, all, almost always. Uh, uh, I have had I have had one experience where there was a very distraught dog in rescue, um, and she had sort of begun to lo to lose hope, and she really didn't want to participate, and that took some that took some uh, quite a bit of coaxing. If that answers so what, the question. <laughs> so, what are, what is your typical client? What is your typical client uh, human client um, wanting? you to help them with with their animal um, client? So it's varied. It's been uh, everything from, gosh, I just want to know what my dog or cat or horse or <clears throat> is thinking. Um, I want to know, are they happy? Um, am, am I providing everything that they need um, to end of life decisions, um, um, to, um, People who have had, the dogs have had physical issues and um, they've been to every normal uh, avenue of health that they can find uh, and haven't been able to get resolution and are just desperate, really, I think, to, to help their pet. Um, and so we've worked through... Uh, you know, communication, if you think about it as a person, if your voice was never heard by the people that you shared your life with, um, it would be difficult. It would be frustrating. And I think that it is tremendously healing for everybody who's involved in the communication. Um, it's I call it he healing communication, and, and this is why, because it ends up being healing for the non-human animal whose voice is heard, whose needs get met, um, who, uh, if they have questions, the questions can be answered. Um, and uh, it ends up being, I think, tremendously healing for the human involved in the equation as well, because there is, I mean, that connection, that bond that we have with our pets is so significant with our, you know, non-human companions, family members. Um, it's so significant. And when everything flows well and everyone's needs are being met, it's mutually beneficial. Uh, it, it, it changes things. I love it. Um, that's, yeah. I, I mean, otherwise we, we're constantly trying to play charades, right? So we're trying to guess all the time. What, what, are, they, what are they doing? I mean, and sometimes we get really good at guessing, but other times we could be way off the mark. We could be, but I think, so we all come here with the ability to do this. We communicate this way with infants, with babies, before toddlers, before they are fully verbalized. True. And and what I always say is, at a certain age, we humans develop a huge disadvantage. We become socialized and verbalized. And that sort of pulls us away from what we all came here with. Um, and so I do think that most of us are communicating with our pets all the time. Um, and I think that we're probably right on the money the vast majority of the time. They're very good at training us, at rewarding us appropriately when we do get it right, right? Um, they're great teachers. And so I think we do get it right a lot of the time. Um, and because so many of us are out of practice, I think it's really nice to have also the confirmation that, you know, yes, I did get that right or I knew it. Um, or maybe a little bit of a, uh, just a little bit of a, a, a redirect 
and um, uh, or or more specific information added to to elevate what's going on. Cool. Um, do you have a lot of um, clients that at the animal's end of life? When you had some, you were, we were talking about that beforehand on our our meet and greet, where you talk about right. like a lot of owners come to you at the end of life and to ask what the animal's wishes are, more or less, or confirm. Probably confirm because they probably all, right. like you say, they probably already kind of know. Yeah, that that does happen a lot. Um, sometimes it's because um, uh, the animal is having physical issues that um, result in great confusion for them, um, and uh, to be able to help clarify what's happening, I think is helpful. Um, but I will tell you that. Um, so how do I want to say this? I want to say um, anyone who is not living a human experience, I believe, because they, are, they, they don't have the disadvantage of the socialization and the verbalization, um, our, our animal companions seem to be much more connected to um, the energies around us, the, uh, the, the life of, of the planet, the rhythms, the everything that occurs in a normal life cycle, they're very aware of uh, the development of life, of birth, of the journey uh, in the middle part, the decline, um, and the death journey, the, the, the detachment from uh, body, that process of letting go, and then ultimately departing and moving on to the other side of the veil. They all have a knowledge of that. Their understanding of that, I would say, in a lot of ways, is um, better, better, more complete, more complete uh, than what we oftentimes allow for or discuss or are comfortable with. Um, and uh, I, they, they, um, they see the value in that journey. Um, I've learned to value that differently in my uh, my uh, my lessons. I, I consider the communication like an ongoing class almost for me, the things that I've learned. Um, and uh, they don't come here just to support us. They don't come here just, they come here, they are souls just like we do. They're not, dog is not always dog, human is not always human, cat is not always cat, um, you know, meaning felines, not me. Uh, and <laughs> um, just a fortunate name, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, and um, there's a full, a fullness of experience there that I think um, doesn't always get recognized. And um, the interplay, the ways in which we can support each other, there's growth there for for every party that gets involved in that communion. And we view ourselves as caretakers, and I think we oftentimes don't realize, and many of us do realize, but sometimes we don't realize how much and all the different ways in which they are also caring for us. And I think we feel such pressure to, um, such um, a weight to make their journey as good as possible and as pain-free and difficulty-free as possible. And I, I would encourage all of us, honestly, to take a step back from that and um, just like we can understand that um, difficulty results in really positive things for us in our lives, that it does for them as well um, and that there is value in that death journey, in that, in that letting go, in being able to take the time and detach fully and experience the fullness of that process and that does not mean that I'm saying do this or don't do this. I'm not. Um, uh, I think every circumstance is different, and everybody has to come to what feels right for them, the right answer for them. And our animal companions will always arrive there with us. They really will always arrive there with us. But as a voice for our animal companions, I also want to say, need to say, um, that I think that it would be beneficial for everybody to when it's appropriate, let go a little and allow and sink into a, a, a 
find a space that's comfortable with regard to that end of life journey, if that made sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, can you, like, we talked about it, so I don't know if you got anything prepared. Like, we were going to do a show a little bit of how you actually go into a meditation to connect. Can you, can you give us a short little meditation here and we can kind of just see your process a little bit better? I know yeah. you, that would be great. So, um, so it has, it has evolved and I like to say that for everybody because um, as everything evolves, uh, I used to spend 45 minutes or so prior to connecting, doing this kind of big process <laughs> to, get, to, get, to get myself into it, which I now think is kind of funny. Um, uh, to, to, because I believed I needed to do this in order to be able to connect. Um, and so um, uh, I would meditate and envision, uh, and I still, I, still, I still will meditate and ground um, and I will, I will pray to uh, angels to ask for assistance to accomplish the highest and best good and hear appropriately and interpret appropriately and all those sorts of things. Um, but I don't spend 45 minutes doing that anymore. Um, <laughs> and um, I think a really uh, good beginning exercise um, is to um, envision and I and I also wanted um, to mention and oh gosh I'm uh, having a uh, moment I will um, I'm forgetting the name of the woman that I learned I learned this technique from and I want to give her credit for it so I'll come up with that in just a moment um, uh, but um, she uh, sent me a technique which I I love and I love to share um, with beginners my version of the technique which is um, envisioning well the first thing that I do is I actually will make a circle around my head and with intention um, kind of encircle my thought process in my my head process and push that down to my heart space so that I'm not functioning in this space because that doesn't serve and I'm functioning from my heart space which is the place from which the communication occurs and I like to then envision a cord going from my heart space to their heart space um, and you can get as basic as you want with this, actually sending messages down the cord and receiving them that way um, visually, obviously. Um, it can be just a thought or a thought bubble that you send down the line. Um, it can be something that you've envisioned writing that you send down the line. Whatever it is that resonates with you or that you connect with. Um, and and then patiently waiting for something to come back and staying in this space, not your head space. Sort of uh, like we do with the records, eh? Sort yes. Of bring ourselves down into the records, yeah. Okay. Uh, exactly yeah. the same thing. Um, and, uh, and, and I think the biggest thing is just letting go, not questioning, stepping into this with faith and, um, and, and vivid imagination and joy, joy, always joy. Um, it is, you know, joy, joy draws everybody in. Um, animals are very intuitive and they respond. If you've ever met or seen somebody meet uh, an animal in fear, that animal responds very differently to somebody meeting them that way versus somebody who joyously welcomes them. It will be the same thing in communication. Um, and then what I also like to say to people is, um, you wouldn't walk into a room and meet somebody for the first time and, you know, run up and kiss them on the lips and, and hug them and just open all your energy up to them. Uh, and, and it's not really appropriate to enter into communication that way either. You want to do it in a, in a calm, appropriate, respectful way. Otherwise, they're going to think you're a weirdo and avoid you. Um, <laughs> Uh, Unless maybe it's your dog that you've had for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and then your dog would think you're a weirdo if you didn't do that, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, yeah, but so, so that's what I would say. And when you receive the message back, accept it and don't question it uh, and, move, and move forward in the, in the communication from there. And what will happen? I think for everybody, as we move through, we start with an exercise and we will practice those things. And one day we will show up 
to practice our exercise and something else will happen before we've had a chance to even envision the cord. And it's the point at which you can, you know, cut the cord, I guess, so to speak, oh. um, and move on to the next incarnation or the next version of what you're doing and, 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 and blossom and blossom from there. I, I, I love when people do, um, do the practice. I, doing the practice on your own, no matter what you've learned or what method you're employing, allows all the other gifts that you have that you're not super familiar with just yet to pop through. And that's the most exciting part, I think. Don't you? That is cool. Yeah. So tell us, tell us where people can get a hold of you. If uh, you, um, I put some stuff up in the uh, beginning in the blurb with with the video and with the live today. But uh, tell us, tell us what you have. uh, You have sort of a special going on. So why don't you give us a yeah? So promote yourself, Cat. Is what we're saying. (laughs) Promote myself. So I can be reached uh, most easily by email at communicator cat, and that's with a C, communicator, C-A-T, um, at gmail.com. Sorry, there's a little gnat flying around in my face. Um, I got a and, fly here. <laughs> a little visitor. <laughs> um, and um, uh, I will provide a 10-minute discovery session um, for anybody who wants to reach out. Um, to see if I can assist or we're a good fit, whatever the case may be, um, and discuss uh, whatever your questions or needs are. Great, great. Valuable. That's Thank beautiful. You. Thank yeah. you, everyone, for coming on. And Kat, will look through the, you'll look through the comments. Some people have some questions, so feel free to answer them directly um, as they go. Um, um, Teresa, it's announcement time. Woo-hoo. So I hope everybody shared out and liked this up because everybody has pets or animals in their life. Yeah. Well, most people do. And if they don't, they should. Um, yes, uh, just somewhere. Along the... Well, you, you have your pets. other animals. You have your wild ones out there. So. I do. That's true. That's true. And you talk to them, even your snakes. I do. I, I, I talk to them anyway. I don't know if I'll ever be able to communicate, but... I talk to them as if I can, you know, so I don't know. Maybe it'll open up someday. But anyway, today um, it's been amazing to have you, Kat. Um, I've been so looking forward to this for such a long time, so I'm so glad we finally got together to do that. And, And it's calming. Somehow this whole conversation has got me so calm and open and I love that so it's been cool (laughs) thank you so much it's so great to see you guys and uh, get to participate I really I really enjoyed it thank you so much (laughs) so um, later today we have um, Janelle Cameron and her show the cosmic ascension report there's lots going on there's like so many planets in retrograde right now Oh, and we've just passed um, the strawberry full moon, and we just passed the um, the um, summer equinox or solstice, summer solstice, and and then in July there's some um, eclipses coming up. So check in with Janelle. And in fact, I've even heard that there's going to be some solar storms that are going to be pretty tough. So so listen to Janelle and find out all about that tonight. It's like at eight o'clock. My time. So what does that make it? What time is it your time when Janelle's on? Um, Nine o'clock your time? Okay, Nine. I think it's nine now. Yeah. It's changed. That's what I thought because I thought she comes on around eight. I usually go to bed around seven, so I've been missing it lately. But anyway, I just love Janelle and how she brings that information. And then Monday, the Akashic Academy does not let you down. There are many shows on Monday. There's – um. Sarah Lillian show, The um, Beauty of the Heart, and then there's um, Kathy, Holmeyer. Kathy Holmeyer's show comes on around dinner time, yeah, and she's got um, dimensions, what's it called again? The, multidimensional, the, the, multidimensional nutrition. That's the one. Yeah, yeah sorry, I probably screwed that up body. now Yeah, and, and her information. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Nourish your multidimensional body. And there's so much information and there's so much to know there. You come, I often have to take notes on that show. And then we have Susan, Suzanne Gunderson 
with the tapping stone that comes on after that, tapping is an amazing thing to use, and, and it helps you through triggers, through anxiety, through so many things, and it's a good practice to do daily. So keep with us all week. There's shows every day of the week at the Akashic Academy. There's a special for you to join us right now. There's only so many open ones at this price. There's a $4.44 special for your first month, and then after that it goes back to um, $44.44. So there's only so many open for that. So get in while you can and try it out for that first month. It's so much fun. And um, soon we're going to have the next Akashic Academy magazine coming out. So if you haven't read the last one, get in there, go to... Um, the AkashicAcademy.com and, and find your way to download it and to catch up on what it comes out quarterly and, and so you, you can look back and see all the old ones and, and everything and anticipate the new ones which I can't wait to see when it comes out too so Kat we had one more question to ask you and then I will announce the winners the okay. question is Good job. Remember, what remember. song would you use to describe your life Oh, gosh. No, Beck says it better, <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> the theme song for your life, yeah, something like that. The theme, the theme yeah, song. Yeah, what's your theme I, song? You like, when you're walking on stage, I what are they playing? Remember what I said. Um, uh, what, popped into, what popped into my head when you said that was, and I don't know if this is a song or if this is from a show when I was a kid, something about the magical mystery ride. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh. No. <laughs> I, there's a Beatles oh, song. Oh, the Magical, Magical Mystery, Mystery Tour? Tour? Not that one. Okay. Yeah, Magical Mystery. Mystery Tour. That's it. That's, no. It's the Beatles. It's a song from the Beatles. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm going with this morning. Yeah. <laughs> that was um, Sergeant Pepper Lonely's Hearts Club. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm not the yeah, rock and roll beautiful. girl. Well, I saw Paul McCartney live play those songs. And they were wow. way different. Wow. They are so awesome. powerful. That's when I heard amazing. those songs, it's like, man, that's so much more powerful than hearing it. So it was cool. All okay, right, so who's our winners? Every week we ask you to share our shows out because many people need to know the information that are here and, and can learn from it. And so we ask you to share it out. So who shared it out last week has won a session with me. And are you ready? That's my drum roll. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Nancy Louise. Hey, Nancy, you have won a session with me, my friend. Yay, we are being put together a and lot. And she, she loves so communicating with her cats. Do, so let's so that's pretty this. cool. I know she's watching because yes, she, she, she talks she's, to her cats. You know what Nancy does is so cool? She helps cats to, um, she helps to adopt them out, but she helps them to find a good fit. She uses all her intuition and intuitiveness and, and her communication to find, like, yes, that, that cat belongs to that home and, and helps them out. Or, no, maybe let's go find another cat for you or something. You know what I mean? She's she's really gifted at that, and so that's really beautiful. And you just got to love her. And next week, if you share it out this week, keep sharing it out. You get to win an amazing session with Rhonda. Woohoo! That's going to be beautiful. So share it out and let that be. <laughs> well, thank you very That's much. That's about it. Can you think of any other announcements? Anything else no, exciting? No. Um, Bex will be back next week. And next week we have the lovely Elizabeth April. And she's pretty cosmic. And you got to come and watch us next week because she's she's pretty she's sure. pretty out of this world. That's all I can say. Like, yay. So we're very excited to have her on next week as well. <laughs> So we've been looking forward to Kat for a long a time. Fans. We keep messenger. Kat's getting more and more Facebook savvy, so we're looking forward to a bigger social media presence from you. We love your <laughs> pictures. You. <laughs> and and we've, we've put your email up there so you can uh, get a hold of Kat for that free session. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you next week. And until then, take care and, and go and chat with your animals in your neighborhood. Namaste. Namaste. Bye-bye.